Hey everyone and welcome to my newest painting video. In this video I am showing you the process of my huge Sarah from the Labyrinth movie inspired painting. This is a painting commission on this rather large scale. I know for other artists this is just a completely small painting but for me and the amount of detail that I always put in my work it's like a super large one and also the composition is super detailed that it actually took me a couple of months to finish it. I haven't been painting all the time on this one painting of course but I started in July and I finished it in October so it has been a couple of months. As you can see I printed out my Photoshop mock-up as always and I traced it with tracing paper onto the canvas and obviously I would not have done it any other way because you see how complicated this composition is. I underpainted my canvas with the metallic paints from Arteza because they are really great for just those beautiful metallic effects. I have been using them in a couple of my paintings already, although they're not super opaque. For this video I have gathered all the footage from the past month and I recorded the video both with my camera, with my smartphone and it has been all on like different hard drives, my laptop and my smartphone and <laughs> in the end I could gather all together in one video and we can finally see the whole process of this huge painting. So uh, let's get started. But before we continue let me do a little bit of housekeeping first. For those of you who don't know yet, my painting videos on YouTube show you my painting process only in time lapse. If you want to learn my process with me explaining what I do in real time and step by step, support me on Patreon for a small amount per month. I have almost a hundred painting lessons and tutorials for you that work you through a complete painting from start to finish and that are way longer than the ones you can find on my YouTube channel. You can download my reference photo, my sketch and the material list for many of my tutorials. If you want to learn more, I have lots of tutorials and real time lessons available for you on my Patreon site in which I teach you my technique in detail and step by step. In many of my videos you even get to see my mixing process in a second camera window and you can download the reference photo too. And for only $10 you get access to another whole library of underrated but even longer real time videos of all my recent artworks. If you have seen some of my works and you always wondered how I did them then this pledge is the right one for you. Just visit my website and browse the tutorial section. There you will find a list of all lessons and real-time videos available. I began with painting in the face of Sarah here, of Jennifer Connelly obviously, and I painted almost like 99% of this painting with acrylics actually and I only switched to oils for the skin parts later on in the process. All the underlying layer I painted with acrylics and in order to get some decent gradients and transition with acrylics which is not that easy because they dry so fast, I use a acrylic retarder. Yes, it is called like that. It literally says that on the package for those of you who are wondering. This retarder makes the acrylic paint dry slower and you are more able to do transitions and gradients, which is great because without that it's just horrible to paint with acrylics. I use one from Golden. It's wonderful. It isn't lumpy or anything like that. I had people complaining that some retarders are lumpy, but this isn't lumpy at all. I use Arteza acrylics. I am absolutely amazed by them because they come in this vast amount. You have 60 colors. I switched out the black and the white because the white is awful. Just forget the white. And I used up the black whenever one paint is used up. I just replace it with a more expensive paint because I want to see if there is any difference in the opacity or the pigmentation. So far, like black and white is definitely better with Liquitex. But for example, I have used up the pink very quickly, which was interesting because it was just really this piggish pink. <laughs> and I replaced it with an acrylic paint from Sennelier, but it wasn't really better than the one from Atiza. So the opacity and pigmentation was very comparable actually. So I will just keep replacing the empty tubes from Atiza and see if there's any difference. But if you are looking for a good quality acrylic paint set and you don't know what colors to buy, I would definitely recommend the Atiza acrylics because you have so many different color shades and then when you use up a color, you can say, okay, I use this color a lot. I will buy a larger tube of this. I have a link down in the video description for you with all the materials that I use and also links where to purchase them. 
in the case you're interested. I am an affiliate partner of Arteza, so I will get a small share with no extra cost for you, but I'm also completely behind the product, so I'm not, I never recommend anything that I don't use or that I hate. For example, the metallics from Arteza, the metallic paints are really, really translucent and not really opaque. So I really just use them for underpainting, just so you know, in the case you were wondering. Yeah, I've been using the Arteza ones for all my paintings so far and they are great. Anyways, back to the painting. I don't want to ramble that long. So for the face, I just use a detail brush and fill in every skin color and as much detail as I can with acrylics. The consistency of acrylics is very gel-like and it's not buttery and fluid like oils. So you actually can't get that fine as you can with oils, at least in my experience with them so far. If I can't get any finer, I just let it be. And I know that with oils, I will get to the next level of fineness and detail. Here, I don't pay any attentions to gradients or blendings. I just mix the color that is needed and put it on the canvas. And I don't pay attention to any blendings. I continued with painting in the hands. The hands are actually my own. I photographed myself because I couldn't find a pose on the internet that resembles the pose of the dress that I found, which is, I don't know, photoshopped a couple of dresses. And I was actually very proud of how the hand turned out in the first attempt already. And I noticed that it is probably because I took my own photos and then you get a lot more skin tones than if you use a photo from the internet. So I had a lot of blues and reds in my own hands on the photo. And because I only focused on putting down the colors without focusing on any blendings, it looked already good because you had all the different colors in the hands and they looked already convincing. Then I continued with painting in the complete dress. Again, everything is done with acrylics so far and I'm working with the Tosh brushes here in this painting. But in the meantime, I have received a bunch of Trekel brushes and I like them a lot more than the Tosh brushes because they're super soft and this is great for working with acrylics. Except for if you want to have very sharp edges, I still prefer the Tosh brushes because they are very sharp and stiff and you can get very like harsh edges. And for the frills, this is what I needed. The Tosh brushes are only available in Europe because they are sold through Bösner and they are not able to ship worldwide for whatever reason. So if you wanna have good acrylic brushes, I would recommend the Drakel ones, they are really great. I will leave you a link in the video description for them. After having finished the first layer on the dress, I continue with painting in the peonies. And the peonies on this painting are much larger than on my other painting that I have done in the meantime. And it turned out that Painting them was way easier in this scale because I could really use the angle of the brush to make those large petals and you also had a little bit of those strokes in the brush that look like veins if you do a flower petal, which was super great and painting flowers with acrylics is just the most satisfying thing <laughs> that I have just realized in the past month because you don't have to wait until it is dry you can just paint over it and it's so great really i will never paint flowers with oils ever again i will just paint them in acrylics because it's so easy <laughs> compared to oils and it looks really very very similar i've compared my recent paintings with my oil paintings from the past because i wasn't sure if it is on the same like skill level or just on the same level and I couldn't make a difference so I'm pretty happy about that. In fact I think that my acrylic flowers look better than my oils because with oils I just didn't bother to add more layers if I was lazy and with acrylics I can just do it in one session. I can put a lot of work into them and they look amazing so this is my current technique for painting flowers. And for those of you who have no idea how I do them I just look at the petals and every flower has this scent and I tilt my brush around the center and I just have a look at the rough like three-dimensionality of one flower and I try to see where we have shadows and then I pretty much render that. Instead of focusing on the details, I focus on brush strokes. So I try to make every brush stroke look beautiful and if it follows the shape and the form of the flower, I let it be and 
it is okay and it doesn't matter if it isn't 100% accurate. It matters if it follows the form and the shape of the flower, if that makes sense. I have probably talked about this in other videos already, but I should maybe make another tutorial just about painted flowers with acrylics, I guess. Then I filled in the background. The background of the figure is just a forest with greenery and more flowers in it, and they are just smaller, but I applied the same technique. I actually mixed peonies and roses in this painting, but I don't think it makes a huge difference. They have the same color and they look very similar when I paint them, so it doesn't make such a large difference. And then I use my dripping effects and I also switched them. I previously did them with oils and gamsel and it was a huge mess every time I did that because the smell is just horrific and you have to ventilate your room, open all the windows so that the toxic vapors get out of your room because it is really not good for your health. And yeah, I completely switched that. I just use a click and water and it looks the same. So it's amazing and I've really only switched acrylic because Atiza sent me their acrylics and I want to try them out and it completely changed my work progress. I'm just still stunned about that. I would have never done it if I haven't just got the acrylics to test them out. So I'm just I'm just so stunned about what happens in my life and then to what it leads to is really weird. It's just another example that you have to try out different things. You have to go out of your comfort zone and test new materials. You never know what happens. In this case, it completely changed my work and I'm so much faster now. And painting makes more fun, which is amazing. Anyways, back to the process. Then after everything had dried, I worked on a second layer of the dress. And here I didn't face a lot of difficulties because there are are a lot of folds and frills and there is a lot of lace so all in all a lot of hard edges and sharp borders so no problem with the acrylics however on the puffed sleeves we have the complete opposite so here we need super soft blendings and very soft wrinkles actually and this was the hardest part so i overpainted the sleeves like three or four times until i was so frustrated and i just used more retarder to hopefully get more blendings and in the end it was just a matter of the right brush strokes at the right time so more or less a happy accident until i was approximately happy with the sleeves and i found that in areas where i have to do those blendings it is helpful to use a large brush and try to make those blendings in only a couple of brush strokes because otherwise the acrylic will either dry or get very sticky so that you don't have any chance to make a good blending. This is what I experienced so far. Maybe you have an idea on how to overcome this problem. I have tried out to spray just water on my canvas directly. This was a horrible idea. I ended up with thousands of little water drops on the canvas and this didn't help anyone. So this is no solution for me. I continued with working on the face next and here I'm switching to oil paint. I wanted to make the face roughly decent looking because it completely annoys me when I work on the rest of the painting and the face is not right and looks horrible like a mutant. So <laughs> most of the time I finish the face so that I can paint with good conscience on the rest of the painting. After having added another layer on the face and being not bothered by it anymore, I continued on working on the dress again. And here I'm just working on more details and the frills and the wrinkles. And also after having done that, I added those little lace details on top of the fabric. For example, there is a pattern on her corset or however that is called. And there's also a pattern on the puffed sleeve and on the lower part of the dress and this is all something that I always add at the end of the painting process because I just either put that on top as a opaque pattern or as a transparent pattern and let the folds and everything else shine through. So this is a neat trick how to paint those objects in a composition. Then I painted the hair and the background behind the figure. Here I'm pretty much just rendering what I see on my reference photo for the hair. I just started with a darker layer on top of these 
dripping effects. Of course, I want to leave some of them there. And then I just use a lighter color and added some individual hair strands. This way you get a pretty good illusion of hair and it always looks nice. Then for the background, I just added a couple of tree trunks in a lighter color so that the illusion of depth is there. And then to let the figure pop out, I worked on the dark hatch or just the greenery around the figure. And here I don't paint every individual leaf, obviously, I just used my flat Tosh brush and with each brush stroke I make a leaf <laughs> or larger areas and just paint the borders more meticulously. And this way you get also a nice illusion of a hatch without painting a lot and it will look good. And then as a second layer I add lighter leaves and then I add more roses on top of it. Next I added the final layers on the peonies and the leaves around the peonies. And this was so much fun. It always felt effortless when I paint roses or peonies, most of them, because the way how the flower petals are shaped are really made for just using a couple of brush strokes and not really painting everything out. You can easily add one or two brush strokes and you have a nice looking petal. And then if you want to refine it, you just use a flat and stiff brush and add a darker shade of pink for the shadows. And if I paint something wrong or make a mistake, I just use the hair dryer, blow it dry and then add another layer and correct my mistake. This is a great thing with acrylics. Especially the peony on the right next to the hand on the right hand side of the painting was especially nice to paint because you have those petals that are very close to each other that form like a pattern like a round sort of bow and this is easy to paint you just use a darker tone of pink and a lighter tone of pink and then you add a couple of brush strokes and then you place the larger petals on top of those smaller petals and that's it of course it takes a lot of practice but it is fun for me painting painting flowers and after time it just gets a little bit more effortless. But not with all flowers. I did have a lot of problems with one of the new flowers that I painted. But it really depends on the shape of the flowers. Some are really made for brush strokes and others not. And then I added another layer on the butterflies. And then finally in the end I decided to add another layer of oils on the face. Since I gathered all the footage over the last three months, I was pretty surprised that I decided to paint the face in the end. I can't even remember that I did that in this order. I did do that in my newest painting actually. Yeah, I don't know. I have sometimes a really weird order to paint my paintings. <laughs> However, yeah, so the last part was painting another layer on the face and make it perfect. And then I added the bubbles around around Sarah. The bubbles are important because they are in the movie as well. They are sort of magical bubbles and they show you dreams or visions or anything. And if you touch them, you can be transported like Sarah was in the movie. She was transported into the ballroom to the Goblin King who felt in love with her and wanted to dance with her until midnight. If you haven't seen the movie, you have to do it because it is a classic and it is just wonderful and magical and one of my favorite movies of all time and this is something because I watch a lot of movies all the time <laughs> yeah and this was the process of my Sarah painting I added glitter in the end and those of you who follow my YouTube videos know how I do it if you don't know how I do it just check out the video that I linked in the end screen there you can see how I add glitter on my paintings I really like it it doesn't fit to each motif that I paint but to many of my magical motifs it fits perfectly and it's so beautiful it it just gives it another layer of extra magic and yeah she is now ready to be shipped i will make prints of her because she's just beautiful sarah is wonderful and it is interesting i think that jennifer connelly the actress of sarah i find her very beautiful like in her teens in this movie she was beautiful but i think she's even more beautiful now when she's older and i think this is always nice that it's not always the youth that is beautiful but the maybe more aged woman too which is always good to see in my opinion because well we will all get old 
yeah and yeah i hope you liked this video and i hope i didn't ramble too much on all the different stuff and yeah if you liked the video give it a thumbs up and leave a comment and subscribe to my youtube channel if you haven't already see you in the next one bye bye